What's up guys, welcome to Daily Dose of Reddit. This is your host, Zach, and today's subreddit is r slash pro revenge. All right, this story's called, be sure to pay your IT help. I had been working at a computer repair shop on a commission-based system. We would get PCs in and the techs would not get paid until the repair work was paid for. And if the client did not pay for the work performed, the shop would take possession after a time and resell the equipment. It was not uncommon for the techs to be screwed out of work they had done. To make this job sound even more appealing, the shop owner would throw PCs from his friends and family to fix which was not paid work. I was looking forward to a pretty big check due to just cranking out the repairs, but I found out that these were all friends of the owners. So I worked for free those two weeks. Damn. One of the things that we do is pull the hard drives and create a complete image of the whole drive for archival protection to be wiped after the job is done. Turns out that the owner of the computer shop and his wife were part of the swingers community. <laughs> Shoot. And were hosting a small but local swinger site that they ran off the notebook they brought in for repairs. I grabbed the hard drive and told the owner that he needed to pay me for the work I had done. The owner fired me on the spot. I grabbed my tools and walked out the door without realizing I had the hard drive in my hand. The owner had built a reputation in the small town it was located in for being a good Christian business, and the owner portrayed himself as a pillar of the community. <laughs> I happened to get the information off the drive and I was able to get access to his passwords, close to 4 terabytes of pictures and videos of their swingers website. Waiting on my three weeks for the last check, I decided that I would go scorched earth instead of looking for a payout. Step one is business. I had some time to look over the labor laws and found out he violated quite a few of them with me. We were treated as contractors, but he took out taxes and supplemental security income, which he never paid into the system. The other thing was, we were required to clock in like hourly employees, but were paid on commission, so due to the pay structure, many employees were getting well under minimum wage for some weeks. Step 2 is reputation. Having the sign-on information, I decided to do a few interesting things with the company website and their swingers website. Website. I put a link at the bottom of the company webpage where I directed people to the swinger site they ran and I changed the password authentication to allow everyone into the paid areas of the site. I also took down some of the pixelated pictures of him and his current wife and posted the original pics. It took them about a week to find out about all this. I also sent out a mass email to everyone on the owner's email list to check out the swinger site. I also gave his ex-wife the drive to help her in her court battle. The Fallout Long-standing contracts had been terminated by his clients in droves. The labor board did an investigation and fined him for his rule breaking, and the IRS did an audit where they found further evidence of his crimes. In the end, he lost his business, his kids, his reputation, and his current wife because he thought he was too much of a big shot to not pay his IT help. Yo, that guy got riggedy riggedy wrecked. Um, however, I would say this this falls closer to nuclear revenge than pro revenge because I think stealing the hard drive or whatever, whether it was intentional or not, is a little more on the uh, unethical side. But I feel that um, appropriate measures were taken. And you know what? That guy, his entire life was a lie. And you revealed the truth. At least now he can live more freely. <laughs> that is, once he gets out of the crippling debt that he's no doubt going to be in. All right, this story's called Competitor IT Company Steals Our Articles. I owned an IT company. We'll call it Uber Tech that strictly manages business networks, no website development, graphics, etc. One of my employees was tackling an interesting support request with instructions for making changes to a company's website. This happens from time to time where a customer gets confused with their various tech vendors or assumes that we provide all 
tech-related services. He called the person to get more context, and being in earshot, I could tell that my employee's call was quickly escalating with a frustrated person on the other end, and he has already offered to pass the call to his manager, me. Uber Tech, how can I help you? Pissed off website owner, I wanna know what is going on here. I don't know who you are, I don't know why you're calling me, and I don't know why you have my support information. Sir, to be honest, I don't know who you are, why we are calling you, and why we have your support information either. But together, I think we can figure this out. I understand that you have a website and made a request for some changes. Who hosts your website? Derp Company. On their support website, there are instructions to send support requests. I followed them, and now I have you calling me with my support information? Sir, I definitely want to get down to the bottom of this. We do not even offer website services. If you would please work with me, I am sure we can get an answer. What I want to do is have you share your screen with me and then show me what you did to request support. I had him run our remote control soft. He then proceeded to navigate to Derpco's support website, support.derpco.com. <laughs> Navigated through the customer self-service pages to a knowledge base article on how to submit a support. He pulled up this specific knowledge base article and I was staring at a verbatim copy of an article that I had written on our own support site. There were no changes to the article, including the step to email your support request to, and it was my company's email address right there. Thank you for taking the time to show me this. I think I found the problem. Notice the email address in the instructions. It is telling you to email ubertech Com. That is us. Now, please allow me to show you something. I then scroll down to the bottom of Derpco's plagiarized support article and noted the creation date, 2007. I then navigated to our company support website, support.ubertech.com, and navigated to our own matching article. We both confirmed that it was the same article, and I showed him the creation date of our article, 2005. Oh, look at that. I think it's safe to say that Derpco has stolen our content, did not even update the instructions, misleading you to send a support request to us. I'm sure you have a few things to take care of with Derpco. I'd appreciate if you did not mention us when you call them. Of course, sir. Thank you for your time with this. I immediately searched Derpco support website, looking for more of our stolen content. Found a total of five articles and promptly printed them out and saved copies as PDF. So, what to do in this situation? Do I call the owner of Derpco? This is a small town, so I needed to be clever and not taint my own image. How do I get revenge? Hire a lawyer, leave the articles as is, and hope more support requests come to us that can bring us business? Revenge unleashed. No! I want a press release! News release! Release date for immediate release! <laughs> Title, Uber Tech Endorsed by Local Competitor. I got some great kudos from local businesses. One client in particular was rolling. Two days later, I get an email from the owner of Derpco. I would appreciate it if you were to remove the press release from your website. This is a small town that is just not good business. I went to their support site and still found three articles from our company. I wrote back and told him that I would be happy to do so, but there are at least three still articles on their website that need to be removed. Two days later, I got another email confirming that the articles were removed. Epilogue. In the end, I took down our press release, but still have a copy kept in our office and would tell this story to our new employees. All I can say is, Michael Scott would be proud. All right, this story's called A Fair Partner Gets Dirty, Illegal, Linens Aired, Loses Job as Financial Planner. Throwaway Account. Uh oh. Note 1. Names, characters, and places are changed for privacy reasons. Note 2. Trigger warning. This revenge story involves gaslighting and infidelity. Names. Matt. Edit me for clarity. 39-year-old gay male with lupus. George. 
partner of 13 years is a year older at 40. John, 33 year old affair partner, financial advisor. Background, a bit of backstory. Partner and I were monogamous for 10 years. Sure, we had an occasional threesome before that, but nothing long term. I know I am potentially going to get a few people who will say that's where it all started. The understanding was that we would not do anything behind the other's back, and whomever we brought into the relationship would be an equal in the relationship. We wanted to have our couple evolve into a thruple. Thruple? Thruple? Yeah. Needless to say, it didn't work out. We tried, and basically the last person we tried to court ended up gaslighting me and playing the victim with George. Admittedly, I wasn't bringing my best self to the relationship. Two people who basically raised me died, and I was in mourning. I was focused on the rest of my family, whom I love dearly. Partner uses my lupus and choosing to spend time with family as his justification for cheating and lying to me about it. D-Day, spread over a few days before Brovid lockdowns. In March, my partner had told me he wanted some time apart. I initially agree, but then things just didn't seem right. I thought we were fine relationship-wise, but something seemed amiss. I have my own place and I give him some space. D-Day 1. Sunday, he tells me he has a spa session, legit massage that evening, and that he would be busy and wouldn't be able to meet till late for dinner. I didn't think anything was going on behind my back. He said he would call when he was done and not to wait for me for dinner. We were still having meals together since it's something we were so used to doing together. I needed some notebook I had left at his place and thinking he was having his spa session, I let myself into his place. Lo and behold, he's having dinner with John. I leave and he assures me that he's just having dinner with a friend and that his spa session got rescheduled. I asked point blank if anything was going on between them and he said no. D-Day 2, Wednesday. I'm just a complete wreck. I don't know what's going on. I don't know what's true and what's real anymore and I get the gut feel that there's more to George and John than George is letting me in on. I do some sleuthing and find out that they're friends on Facebook but not on Instagram. Curious, no? Yet, they've been liking each other's posts on Instagram. I remember George logging into my iPad, so I go on and check for any message history and wouldn't you know, I see exchanges between them going on for months. Once again, I ask George, who is this person whom he's friends with on Facebook but not on Instagram? And why are their interactions so bizarre? George tells me he's just a friend, nothing more, and that I'm crazy. My blood must have been boiling at this point. I then remind him that he's still logged into my iPad and his face just changes. He tells me that I betrayed his trust and that I shouldn't have done that. He must have been in full-blown panic mode. In their messages, I find out that they've been seeing each other since September 2019. I had an emergency appendectomy in October 2019. Turns out, what I thought was indigestion was actually chronic appendicitis and it had finally ruptured. And the very next day, while I was recovering in the hospital, George and John went out for dinner and John stayed over after. No prizes for guessing what happened that night. They're talking about me in their conversations and they even arranged to meet on Monday after D-Day 1. John asked if I would show up again and George said that I wouldn't. At this point, my whole life before just felt like one big fat lie. I'm having plenty of sleepless nights thinking about how I'm the chump they were fooling for five months. I was none the wiser. Furious, I engaged revenge for hire service. I wasn't thinking clearly and caveat emptor, emptor, I don't know what that means. I lucked out with a service that did a good job. I gave them all the information on John I had, not much, just his social media accounts, and they did some investigative work. They dug up quite a bit of dirt on him. Turns out, John was in a relationship as well. Inform the partner? Check. George wasn't the only person John was cheating with. They managed to find some chat history of his hookups all the way to 2017. What's most interesting is that John enjoyed using illicit drugs while having these trysts. 
completing with contact information of parties involved and locations where it happened. They dug deeper and found conversations where he would advise friends to commit insurance fraud. Nothing major, mind you, but fraud is still fraud. And from the conversations, it seems that the insurers did pay out for bogus travel delays. The revenge agency then asked me how I would like to proceed with the information. I told them, I just want his life ruined. My life and relationship have been ruined. Why not share a little of the pain I was feeling? The agency said they had informed all parties involved. Last I heard, his insurance agencies dropped him on the basis of encouraging insurance fraud, and he has a criminal record for drug use. And now that he has a criminal record, means he can no longer travel to Canada or Japan, countries he loves to visit. His family knows that he's been cheating and using drugs, and his partner knows he's been screwing around without protection and without prep or pre-p. Prep, right? That's the, uh, the that one drug that helps prevent the spread of HIV. It either helps prevent you contracting it or spreading it. I'm not sure which one. Or both, maybe. I think it's, I think it's pr protecting from it. Either way. Uh, <laughs> bad guy. My question is, when you already have a pretty open relationship, why would you go behind your partner's back? Like you, <laughs> what? All right, this story's called, Kid Trying to Kill Harmless Snake Gets a Death Wish. My mom and I were hiking at a nearby state park when we came across this 11-ish year old boy who is throwing rocks at a snake for no reason. We do not have any poisonous snakes where I live. They are all harmless and generally not aggressive. This stupid kid had obviously wandered away from his parents and was being cruel for no reason. We yelled at him to stop, but he kept throwing rocks at this poor snake. Suddenly, the snake lunged at him and bit him on the leg. The kid starts freaking out and the snake slithers away. My mom then looks him dead in the eyes and says, You're going to die now, you know. The kid ran away screaming bloody murder. It was the funniest thing I've ever seen. Now, I'm not condoning uh, animal cruelty, but you know, maybe when you're a little kid, you see snake and you're kind of conditioned to believe snakes are bad guys, uh, literal cold-blooded killers. I like snakes, by the way. And I don't know. If I see a snake, I'm going to safely assume it is venomous, not poisonous, uh, because, you know, <laughs> survival instincts, maybe, and also lack of knowledge. So I don't know if the kid was trying to be a jerk or was trying to be a badass. But again, there's nothing badass about assaulting animals because guess what? If you leave them alone, chances are they're going to leave you alone. As Coyote Peterson says, admire from a safe distance. And I'm sorry, but playground rules don't apply. Throwing rocks do not equal admiration, despite what you might think. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell to never miss an episode.